Authenticit fans, welcome back. This is what we are building today. It is a set of Spitfire rudder pedals and, without doubt, it's the most substantial 3D printing project that Authenticit has ever released. I don't actually have a set here as the designer, Phil Bendai, who lives in Australia, not only designed and created this, but he also produced the assembly video you're about to watch. So this is his set of pedals that he's giving you a walk around at the moment. I should also give credit to Authenticate community member Gaza Coleman, who beta tested Phil's design, provided some valuable feedback and suggestions, and helped with the addition of a Mark IX version of the foot stirrup, as you're looking at the early version stirrups in this clip. Now, if you're bursting with enthusiasm to go build these rudder pedals, there is one caveat I thought I should mention, which is that these are specifically Spitfire rudder pedals, and they won't work as a general purpose rudder pedal, because they typically include toe brakes. Now, I'm sure I don't need to tell you Spitfire aficionados that there are no toe brakes on these pedals. Braking on the Spitfire is done with a handbrake lever, and to apply differential braking to the wheels, you move the rudder pedals to a portion the pneumatic pressure as required. Here's a quick clip to explain. See the needles bottom left. They show how the pressure is shifting, and then we'll get into the build. Brake lever, so we're applying the hydraulics here on the brakes, and then a left rudder, and then a bit of right rudder. And then off it goes. You can really hear the air going. Authenticit is a freeware project. We're creating flight controls for a wide range of aircraft with an initial focus on vintage warbirds, followed by vintage and classic general aviation. We're harnessing the power of 3D printing in conjunction with high quality but low cost components like hall sensors and sealed bearings. All flight controls can be assembled at your kitchen table with no workshop tools, no soldering and no metal work. You can source the parts yourself or third parties are providing kits of all the hardware as well as 3D printed parts. Okay, let's get into the assembly proper. The description includes a link to download all the files you need. Free, of course, this is Authenticit. You have 3D printer files, so you can 3D print the parts. There's a list of the hardware parts you need to buy. Now, if you don't want to source the parts individually, you can buy construction kits from our friends at SimKit Supplies. All the sensors, bearings, and everything except the screws comes in construction kit one. The screws come in construction kit two, and for this build, you'll need two boxes of the screws. You've got the assembly guide to accompany this video, and you've got the wiring guide, although the wiring is very simple in this device. If this is your first Authenticate project, I should also point out that these pedals do not plug straight into your PC. They plug in to port H8 of the Universal Hub, and I'll link to the download and assembly guides for that in the description. Okay, over to you, Phil. Let's get started. Okay, these are the Authenticate Spitfire rudder pedals. Just before they get released, I guess. Still in beta testing. Um, as you can see, we've got Mark 1 pedals on there. However, it will take the Mark II pedal. It just has to be attached. And you can see it's a self-centering set of pedals. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some improvements over time as people get used to using them. Well, hopefully they get used to using them. Um, it's taken a fair bit of time to make, so develop the, the design, okay, there's just a sample of some of the bits and pieces under there that went into making this, so lots of offcuts, anyway, uh, attaches to the floor quite easily, 
Okay, in these videos that come that follow, uh, along with the instructions that you'll print out, uh, and lots of bolts, you will hopefully uh, have a bit of fun putting this together. Okay, good luck. Okay, I'm just going to show you how to assemble the mag holes, more particularly the ones that are the upper one, which is damped. So in this video, I'm putting in the plates here just to show you how they go in there, but I don't actually want you to attach them there permanently just yet because it gets in the way of attaching these to the main arm. Okay, so this is uh, Phil's awesome damped uh, I won't call it a mag hole because it doesn't have a hole or a mag in it. Uh, it could, but in this instance it doesn't. So to assemble this, it's very similar to the normal mag hole, which is on this side. We're going to ignore those for a second. So we have a, a printed cogged wheel where you could put a magnet. Um, it takes a standard 6003 bearing that just slips onto there. Okay, now that slips into this, which is a bit like another mag hole. And you can see you got teeth just protrude through those two holes. Then you attach that with your standard 20mm countersunk bolts to this. Now the orientation doesn't really matter with this, you're not trying to line up a magnet or anything like that. So, put that one there. Actually it does matter because you need to line up the teeth with where the mag holes are going to go. But as far as a magnet and a sensor is concerned doesn't matter. Oh well. You know what I mean. So we do those up as per normal. Then these, the rotary dampers, just fit neatly into these little holes, the slots. There's a sort of another way of doing this, but uh, Anyway, that's the basic mag hole or dampened unit, and you can find it's really, really quite stiff to turn at this stage. In reality, when you put the on the end of the arm, it doesn't have a massive effect. Uh, now, to keep those in place, don't attach this yet, but I'll show you. They will go into these little recesses here and it just like that it should sit flush yep, must have got that slightly skewed so that's the other way you do it you just push them into there and that We'll line up there. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so on this side, now this is the upper plate. All this is the upper componentry. And very important to get the 10 mil volts from the top. So there's three of those. As I said, I don't really want to assemble that just yet. We're getting ahead of ourselves. But the other bit you will want to put in will be this. And you'll notice that that D is flush. So that slips on there. And the 14mm countersink drops down that hole. And this definitely doesn't matter on orientation. 
Although we do need a slightly longer screwdriver. And just do it up so it's firm. So that when that is attached to there, that's how it's going to go. So as I said, don't put that in there just yet. You can leave the, the rotary dampers in here just for safekeeping. It doesn't matter which side they stick to, but uh, okay. Now, if we go, that's the upper one. That'll sit like like that off the arm. So now, although I'm much more conventional, this is standard mag hole. There's no cork or anything else in this bit. Um, you'll see that the boss has a slightly different D in it. It's actually a slightly different length to the upper one. So don't mix them up. Okay, so we have the peg. I put the magnet, not the magnet, the, uh, the bearing, the 6003 on that. We have our aligned magnet pointing towards the little dimple. I'll put a little north on mine, but uh, okay, so that slips into the case. As I said, this is pretty standard mag hall assembly. Just make sure you use the one I gave you with the files because there are a range of mag hall designs. Okay, so 20mm bolts again, same as the upper. Now, assuming you've aligned your hall sensor correctly, when you put it in, your magnets are lined according to that dimple, so we don't have to sit here aligning this while we assemble it. Do that up. Now, this can only really fit one way at this point. And that goes in there, another 14mm countersunk screw. Okay. So, you'll notice on this that there's a little V that's pointing forwards. It's not, it's only important when you're attaching it to the, uh, to the main arm. So here we have our wires. I'm going to show you this once again. Don't bolt this in again uh, yet. Um, but you want these wires. There's not a lot of room in there, so you can't twiddle them after you've put them together. But you want to slide them through in order on the, I'll say the port side of the uh, of the plate. Oops. Like that. So I'm only showing you this at the moment because it's easy to see. But that's the way it'll go in later. So I say the port side that's facing forwards. So from the from the aircraft point of view, the port side, right hand side from the pilot's point of view. And it sits in that recess quite nicely. And there you have the wires hanging out. That they will be attached with 8mm countersunk screws. So 10mm on the upper and 8mm on the lower. Now if you add these two together, the component trees are different, but they will actually end up being exactly the same height. So you could replace the damped one with one of these without a sensor in it and maintain the height uh, if you were not interested in putting a damper in there. Okay.
Okay, quickly, I'm going to show you the new tip of the arm design. Bolt on three screws there. There's these bearing inserts here. The bearings. Uh, I'll quickly show you the assembly technique. It's fairly uh, robust now. It's fairly thick here and here. There isn't much load there. These press. They don't. They're not a tight fit. They're just a loose fit. The bolts do all the work now. Uh, okay. So just to show you how the bearings go into these little uh, inserts. They just press in. They don't fall out. They're a nice fit. If your calibration on your printer's right, they should just go in fairly easily. Uh, so you'll see each one of these has a little V in it. The V faces forward and goes on the outside. So this V will be going forwards and it will just drop into there. It's flush. Uh, there's no force required to get it in there. If you've got some dags in there from the printing, well, maybe you need to clean them off, but uh, generally speaking, they should just drop straight in. They shouldn't be rattling around loose, but uh, they, they shouldn't be a, a tight fit. Okay, so the V on that one goes in there. Oops. Yep. Just like that. Now you should put these, thread them into the caps first just to make sure the thread is working. Uh, I find that especially with my printer I get a little bit of elephant's foot or a different, if I print with black PLA they, the screws don't work so well. Uh, so I always run these through first. But anyway, uh, once they're set up this is an 8mm M4 button head. And they just go in like that, so they're firm. Don't over tighten, but uh, there we go. So that's the second one. They could be shorter, but these are the ones that are authentic and approved on the uh, existing parts list. So uh, that's what I'm using. Everything in this project is already on the Authenticate Parts list. Okay. So that's the bearing inserts attached. So now we'll put these screws in here. Oops. And we line it up. We'll do one on the first. So that's the centre one first. Doesn't really matter what order you do. Okay. These are eight millimetre long countersunk screws. Oops. Well, it might be easier to put those in before the, uh, the bearing caps go on, but uh, anyway, they do it fairly easily. The threads printed vertically in the main arms are always a little bit better, so but check them first. And they're done not, not, not over tight, but just firm. Okay, and if you want to see how the arm attaches to that, the pivot arm, this is where the pedals are on. You just slide in, line up the holes. This can be a little bit tricky, but you've got these bearing caps here. They just slip into there, one on either side. Okay, just push them in. 20 mil countersunk screw. Um, these ones have got uh, hex heads. Should have got the hex driver. Anyway, you tighten those up with the hex driver. I've just got my finger at the moment. 
Actually, you should have Phillips head screws because they're the authenticate ones. So they're done up flush. This. Yeah. And there you have it. It's a pretty robust pivoting arm. Okay. Okay, in this video we're going to join the two halves, main arm main. So at this point, it doesn't matter which way is up, because they're both completely symmetrical. Um, even with the bearings on the end, it doesn't really matter at this stage. However, when you attach the boss with the relevant mag hall, or the damping end, which is an inactive mag hall, this is where it, you're making the decision on which is the up and down. This is the upper end, which fits the, the dampers. They're not, not there at the moment, but uh, and you can see it's flush. Otherwise, it's it's almost identical. Not quite. There's a slight height difference to the lower one, and you can see the step in there. So that pretty well identifies the lower one. At the moment, I've just used texture to put a little V in there, but I'm going to emboss a little V in there to show that that's the forward direction uh, as you as the pilot will be looking forward. That matters from the orientation of the magnet which is located in uh, here and the uh, the hall sensor. So, so we're going to remember that. So what we'll do is we'll start with this. Now each one of these has a little fillet that was really more to help printing than anything else. If it gets damaged for very, some reason just cut it out. It's very thin. Uh, as I said, just for printing, uh, but I have put little notches in here, which is kind of nice to get an orientation. But we've got little wings on the side there, so these can only really, they could either go that way or that way, and we want it to go in that way. So they got vertical sides. If you got a bit of elephant's foot like I did, uh, you might have a little bit of trouble in there. Hey, you've got a better printer than me, I'm sure, uh, or at least better set up printer. So anyway, that should line up here, those little grooves fitting over those little fillets and boom. That's how that one goes in. Now you can assemble these with the 14mm screws before you start but you get better access without this on top but you can only do one of them that way uh, and I'll show you why. So what we'll do is that these are M8s using the handy length tool. Now I'll put them all all together beforehand. So I've pre-threaded these screws into the, the arm so I know the threads work and I'll use Phil's handy tool to get these in. You can't use this later on because it's a bit too fat but it's alright at this stage. So you want these screws to go in pretty straight and we'll balance them Cross. Okay, and I shall put them all in place and just do them up. No. See them a little bit loose at the moment. You could use 10 millimeter long M4s. It wouldn't make much difference. These screw threads go all the way through the arm. So if you think to yourself an 8mm one, no I need 10, I'm going to give it maximum strength, well go right ahead. Uh, probably make them 14 if you like, it wouldn't really matter.
Now you want these to pull down and make sure the faces are well mated underneath. Don't have to be the tightest things in the world. The loads on these are all in shear. They're not pulling out. So that's why an 8mm one's okay. Now, you might be tempted to go and put the uh, the other side on at this point, but that would be a mistake. So what you want to do is line up the D. And you have this nice convenient hole. And you can drop that screw down there and go for an even smaller screwdriver here. And now we're tightening the mag hole to the boss. Okay, so now that that's in there, that's fully assembled. If you had put this on, you wouldn't be able to get to that screw. You could pre-assemble it and do what we're about to do with this one. Okay, so this one, it doesn't matter what the orientation, you've got these two markers obviously front to back, but there's no magnet to a line, no sensor, so it doesn't really matter. You can get this one totally wrong, it won't matter. Well, there is no totally wrong. You might have to just pull the sides together a little bit to get it in there, because it tends to splay out a little bit. And here you go. Clunk. And the holes should all line up. And okay, you'd see the problem now. Once you've done that, if you tighten it down, you cannot do up that screw. So off it comes. Fourteen mil M4. Do it up now, and do that little process again, but this time, yeah, so these little things are a bit of a nuisance. Okay, so now, You need to tighten these screws up and pull that thing down. You've got the same clearance here as you've got on the other side, so there's no real advantage. One way using one or the other. Big issue here is to make sure the screw goes in straight. Oops. I've done this before, I promise. Okay, that one's in. Put one on the other side. Just turn that around so you get better access to it. Keep it in straight. Once it gets going, it's aligned. I always have a gap in here. That's just the way it prints for me on my printer. It's not what I intended and if you look at the files there is no gap. But it always splays out a little bit and it's always got a little bit of elephant's foot taking care of that first layer. And it just sort of truncates the bottom a little bit. You'll notice there's no hole sensor in that particular lower boss and sensor section. This is just a demonstration. In your one, you'll have wires sticking out of the side of there. Or at least you'll have a hole sensor in there ready for the wires. 
I guess you could put them in after you've done this. So, yeah, no play. It's a pretty robust unit. So, top, upper, lower, and the wiring will come out that way, but that's how you mount it in the lower plate with the wires. So, okay. Okay, this next sequence, uh, arguably, you could do in a number of different orders. Um, I'm going to do it in the uh, top and bottom plate order first. Uh, anyway, let's put the, uh, the top plate on first. Actually, no, we'll put the bottom plate on first because it'll save knocking up those wires. Now, I have already showed you this bit, but uh, we need to get those wires into this side of the plate so that should be fairly quick so note the pointing forwards there is actually a hole on the other side um, if you yeah it's just a bit of a contingency but uh, We'll be going for this side of the plate. That's the way it works with the magnets and the mag hall set up as described in these instructions. So, just need to pull those through. Keeping the order so we don't twist them. Just keep them even. Till they slot in like that. Okay, those wires are a bit longer than needed. Better to have them too long than too short. So, just reiterating, we have on the bottom here the 8mm countersunks, and they will fit. Oops. Apologies for the continuity change. I now have two green arms on the uh, on the main arm. They're both the same, so don't worry, nothing's changed. So if you put these wires in with the ferrules, don't go yanking on them. Um, anyway, they drop clear. They will go into this little box which has the J45 connector in it, but we're not putting that on just yet. Okay, so we can turn that over. Don't put too much weight on those wires, but... Uh, now we have these fitting into here and here we have those 10 millimeter countersunk screws and as I've said before pre-thread them make sure they go in easily You can tell that's the top plate because it's got a little dome on it, which is on the original. And also all the recesses won't work the other way, so... <laughs> so now we have the upper and lower plates. Apart from the lengths, it's probably pretty close to the original Spitfire. 
Okay, next section we'll be putting these into the frame. Okay, we're going to put the uh, frame halves together in this now. So you should have this like that. These are the two halves. You can tell which side goes to which. The slope here, that's a little recess for the arm swing, goes to the outside. They're a mirror of each other, uh, but they're not interchangeable. One's left, one's right. Or port and starboard. <laughs> Just for... Now you... The reason that we, the order that we put these together is you have to sort of slip these in to sides like that. If you put the cross brace and everything together uh, beforehand you won't be able to slide this in. So that's why we're going to put this in now like this. So I said, there's many ways you can put this thing together, many orders. Uh, this is just one that I'm showing you that works. But, uh, okay, so these are M5, 16mm bolts. Also on the authenticate list of parts. So I've got, yeah, I like the black ones, but most of them are silver. So I'll just do those up lightly. So now we can line up the other side. So. Okay, and I have another four of these to put in the bottom. A little bit harder to see these things now. The bottom ones are the hardest to do up at this point because the arm gets in the way. You also feel if you've put the dampers in, you can feel they're a little bit stiff. Yeah, well, maybe they're more effective than I thought. Apologies for the bad viewing. And got to get these lined up. There it is. So maybe with the magic of video editing, I will speed this bit up. But we're basically going to put the four bolts in the bottom, and then we're going to tighten them all up. So if I cut the next bit, you'll know what I did. So you can do it up very slowly with one of these. I'll do it at the top first, that's easy. Now that's easy because you can swing that all the way around. These bottom ones, well you can do it. It's just a bit of a nuisance. So you do it bit by bit or you could use one of these. This is not an authenticate part but anyway. Once you've got them tight enough, the little ratchet will work on that, and it becomes Oops. a 
lot easier than using a fixed Allen key. A lot easier with that. Now, one last piece to show on this frame is this crossbar. Now, there is an up and a down. You'll see there's a slightly smooth section in one side of the screw thread, which isn't on the other side, and that just makes the bolt go in a little bit easier. This is a 50mm M4 button head, and that should just drop through and screw into that hole. This thing can go in either way around, that way. It makes no difference. It's all symmetric. And that's partially done up. And do up the other side. Get it, we'll get it threaded. Okay, that's the basic frame put together. It's pretty rigid. Okay, this time we're going to assemble the side arms. These, well, stabilizers, for lack of a better term, stops it from falling over on its side. So when it's assembled you have the sidearm with the rollers at the back. So that's and this will go here. So the first thing is these two screws. These are 30 mils and they go through here. Oops, yep, and here, and put that on its side, and then go onto that. Okay. I see some velcro dots there, they're for attaching to the carpet or matching velcro dots on a hard surface. Okay, so that's those two. There's a slight angle to get into those, but yeah, it's quite doable. And then, slightly higher up. We have an M8, sorry, an 8mm M4, and that goes in the top hole up here. 
So now that side arm is attached and stops the whole thing from wanting to rock over on its side. Okay, the next bit to attach to this is the rear, I call it um, the bulkhead because effectively that's where the bulkhead in the underneath the seat is and you've got a universal bearing which goes through the sliding arm uh, in the real thing but uh, anyway to attach that to there we have these 20, 14 mil M4s, they go there countersunk they will go into those two holes you need a longer screwdriver fits through those convenient holes that uh, sit in the back much better to have these separate that way if things break or we need to change things they're very easily replaceable there are a few options I guess if you want to go off the script you could bolt straight to uh, the ground or some other channeling okay and into the back of that we have the pin the roller and we have the bearings that sit just there and there and that just drops into that hole uh, and there you go we have the side stabilizing um, outrunners assembled okay short video here uh, this is the assembly of the pivot arm that goes on the holds the pedals so here we have the sliding tube I'm trying to use the the names they use in the full-size Spitfire you can see there's two holes there which line up with here there's a slightly underside so you should be able to slide that straight in I made a little mark so I make sure I line it up and then we use these M3s and they screw in there this is a bit adaptable because you can fit the standard authenticate um, aluminium tube in there if you actually wanted to extend this thing uh, and you can use these screws to lock it in place uh, sometimes it's just tight enough without these screws but anyway they'll lock it in there quite positively Oops, get in the frame okay get the idea there it doesn't have to be super tight You're just stopping this from falling out which it won't really do uh, okay now if you are attaching the Montana pedals which are the full-sized uh, later model Spitfire that basically matches up to there there's a slight overhang and you would put that straight on using these plugs in here because these were set up for a different set of pedals and you would just screw those in with an M4 it's a uh, I can't remember the exact length. Anyway, this video isn't focused on these pedals. There were an option though. What we're more interested in is the... I'll show the assembly of these in a separate video, but these pedals here, uh, which are the Mark 1 Spitfire pedals, and they have a, a system for putting them on that makes them fairly adaptable. Uh, okay, we've got these dovetail fittings. We have the M4 8mm button head screws and they will go in like that. So as long as they sit under that level. So we've got two of those that holds that fairly firmly in place. I might make an adapter like this for the Montana pedals but uh, at the moment this is just for the Mark 1 pedals we have the M3 flange screw this just is a retaining tab if you like and it stops the uh, the pedals from sliding off when in use it's, uh, 
slightly annoying thread size, so we will do it up with that. Not thread, uh, Phillips head size. Okay, so that doesn't have to be super tight or anything, so probably better if it isn't. I've got a little slight ridge on there, and let's back it off a fraction. That slips up and down there quite easily. So when you slide on the Mark 1 pedals, they're a little bit more flexible than I thought, maybe 100% density on those, but uh, yeah, you just flip that up, no need to tighten it, that won't come off. Uh, and so that's how the arm works. And that, I've shown in another video, another section of this video, fits into the main arm. Okay. Okay, another quick assembly video for the pedals. Uh, okay, these are the Mark 1 pedals. These are the ones that the, the whole uh, system is sort of focused around. It will take the Montana later model ones with adapters. However, this video is about this assembly. So we have a 27mm plug that fits in there. So as you can see, it's got little holes with tap threads in them and they take an M4 8mm or it can be slightly longer it doesn't have to be but uh, I think there's some slightly longer ones listed and I think they're 14s but anyway these are the 8s you only really need one on this but it looks nicer with them on both sides but if you're running short of bolts like me, you might go back to just using one or the... Okay, so that's the uh, attachment there. And then the dovetail. Oops. It fits underneath. Like that. Once again, you probably want to pre-thread these just to make sure that they work. They are a bit tight. I always found it a bit difficult printing with black PLA for some reason. I'd have to lower the temperature. Unfortunately it pokes up a little bit there. If we had a shorter bolt it wouldn't poke up so maybe you might want to find the shorter bolt that's not in the authenticate list, but these are the uh, approved bolt sizes that I'm working with. So that's done up nice and tight. And that's one assembly. They're identical on both sides, same as the arms, and as I showed in another video, that's how they fit in there and lock in place. Okay. Okay, in this section we're going to be assembling the springing mechanism, which is uh, kind of important for these uh, rudder pedals, make them self-centering and sprung. So these are the basic components. Uh, I've got a 40 millimeter from the outside spring. I'm I think the ones, the official authentic hit ones, come 38. I've, uh, I've got two of these which are two different lengths, so just measure the outside. It, it matters a little bit when you're pre-tensioning it, uh, but it shouldn't be a big drama. Anyway, uh, we'll start off with spring. goes into this uh, uh, latch pin, that's the best way of putting it. I've got the cinch pins. Um, they just drop into that hole there, just push it through. You've got a, I think it's a 6mm M3 button head, and it just does it like that. So make sure this is a good print, you don't want these things breaking. Okay, so this is, if you like, a tightening and locating lug. 
Uh, I tend to put the cinch pin on the other way. So we shall put the cinch pin on this end. Just push it in. Might need a little bit of a push to get it to seat. Or we can pull it down with the, uh, the screw. There you go. So that's the springing. Alright, so the next piece is, this is going in there like that. You can see there's a, a hole down there. And in that hole goes an M3. Uh, I think that also, it's, that's the flanged M3. So it fits down inside there. Yeah, we'll put it in there first. Okay, you can see that's how much thread you've got there that's biting into the to the hole on the end there. So putting it that that button head has to face up, otherwise it won't fit. Okay. So that just has to engage. Just push it down till that thread engages. Now you'll notice it screws down, there's no tension on it yet. And then it gets to within about a millimetre gap, roughly. And you use this screwdriver, works better with this nut. Gets down there to about a millimetre. Now it should be tensioned. You don't want to over tension, this is just in the neutral position, but you want a little bit of tension on this. So it's about a millimetre of tension and you've got a reasonable amount of thread engaged because you don't want this thing flying out. So there you go, it's not over tight. Now just in case things decide to break, I put a scatter shield on here. It sits in there. Uh, some of the early designs with uh, when I was using the dowel pins uh, they could take off um, dowel pins were too much stress concentration but the cinch pin seems to be pretty robust but they can fly a long way <laughs> if you uh, if they do decide to break okay so that's that one I have another one identical so you need two of these these are both the same so to attach these to the back of the frame, you need a latch. And these are the latches. They're both identical for either side. And they need to be put on the back of... You can see that. They need to go on the back of the arm. They could go either way, but the, that bit has to be on the outer side. So, whoops, that way. You could put them upper or lower, when I say either way. And here we have M8s, countersunk threads, uh, screws. So we'll just put these in one at a time. Once again, make sure you pre-threaded these so that they go in straight. I guess the advantage if you manage to cross thread it, you can always switch one from the upper to the lower. Slightly better engaged. OK. 
Okay, and we'll put, put the other one in. Yeah, everything's fiddly. Okay, that's relatively firm. And now we have these 30 millimeter screws, so there's two on each side. So we'll locate this one first, so that pops under there. And you'll find that the holes line up at the back with these when you've got that lined up there. And there's little threads, these ones here. That one's in. Okay, they're installed now. I would recommend one, I'll show you the mechanism working. So that's self centering. I haven't had a failure yet with the cinch pin design. Now, there's one more step that I would recommend is tethering. So if for some reason something fails this is a little bit of uh, the wiring you could use fishing line whatever you like I just tied a knot in that end so it wouldn't fit through and we pull that tight I've put a little hole in that uh, uh, cinch not cinch uh, latch pin and I put a little hole on the alternative side to this Near the alternative spring just a, doesn't take an awful lot uh, just a little knot there you can just tie a knot or at the end so it doesn't slip through or you can tie it around whatever you like but it, so you can see it's got enough there but I have tested these things breaking and that contains everything I wouldn't let my kids play around behind here or the cap uh, but uh, there you have it, that's the springing mechanism assembly. Okay, I'm going to show you how to attach the arms, which we assembled earlier. Uh, I did show you this briefly before, but I'll show you again. Uh, 
So basically the arm just slips in there. You keep the other end, goes into this. It's a fairly loose fit there, which is designed to be a bit loose. Okay, so the bearing caps. Have to wriggle it around till it fits. Top and bottom. Yep. Go. Twenty millimeter M4. another 20 millimeter m4 at the bottom and now you're thinking how do you get the screwdriver in there you don't use the fat one here's that screwdriver it fits through this neat hole that it's been provided and a presto repeat that on the other side Flip on your pedal, put up the latch, and you have an assembled rudder pedal. Self-centering. Heel sits on here. It'd be nice if that's slightly longer. Maybe I'll do that in a future iteration. Uh, there you go, it's pretty well together now. Okay, here we're going to attach the heel boards and the rear frame to the assembly. You could run this, I guess, without the heel boards, but it's certainly a lot more comfortable to run with it and a lot more realistic because they were there on the real thing. Okay, so you have these are mirrored, these are the two heel boards. You can see the cutouts there for the right and the left, port, starboard, and they will sit there on the cross brace. But first of all, uh, we have these two frames that sit on it. These are identical either side. Um, they've got a little, they've got a little bit of elephant's foot filling in one side, but there's a little slot that allows you to guide the screws into there. Uh, so I once again advise you pre-thread these. Okay, so you've got these little tabs that go onto the sides and sort of wouldn't say lock it in place, but certainly keep it in place, uh, adequate for what, you know, what we need in this. So that tab fits against a hole that's in the front frame, and the same thing happens at the top. These are 6mm M4s, so you can use Phil's handy tool to make sure of that. You could put eights here, there's certainly enough thread in there to, to do it with, uh, so it's not super critical in this instance. You could even go longer than that actually, but uh, just wasting a longer screw. So we'll just put those tabs on there. Oops. Okay, and I've already put the tabs on the other side, so these two sit together like that. You see this little raised part sits on the top, so that's going to sit there. So now it doesn't really matter what order you do this in. Uh, we can might as well do it this way, get a little bit better access. Make sure it goes in straight. Same down the bottom. Just sort of holds it in place. Okay. The other side will sit there. 
we can put the, the cross brace in there. This is exactly the same as the front one. You'll notice the top has the little um, there's a smooth section so that it guides the thread of you know, the bolt a little bit before it gets there. So 50 millimeter button head M4s. So just do that up finger tight that goes all the way through. Probably doesn't need to go all the way through but they're the best bolt available uh, in the authenticate range in my opinion. Okay so this one same. up tight. Okay, you can put the heel boards on now so they'll just drop into place. They got the cutouts for them. Okay, and this time we are using 8mm M4 countersunk screws. They just need a little bit more depth to hold them in to make it through. Once again, you could probably use longer ones if you want. Just uh, the 6mm ones just seem a little bit too short for this. Yeah, it doesn't take too long. And the only other one left is this final screw here. You could have done that up before, it doesn't really matter. Just get it in straight, that's all. It's a little awkward coming in at an angle. Unfortunately, this awesome little screwdriver adapter is just slightly too long to fit between the frames. So my little trick here is to take the bit out. It's not really that tight, or it shouldn't be. And just do it up straight that way. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Okay, really gives just lateral support, everything's sort of sitting flat. There are holes on the outside, you could put more tabs out there, if that is what you wish. When it's sitting on the ground, your heels will slide up and down on here as you push the pedals up and down. So, heels here, foot over here, you'll find it's much more comfortable than putting your heel back here. Okay. Okay, here we're going to have the wiring box assembly. Uh, just you can probably you have to put this in after you've done up the, the bolts on the side, the screws on the side. Uh, probably the easiest way is to set it up this way. You can probably do this in many different orders, but uh, anyway, so we've got uh, M3 six millimeter screws. So they sit in the side here. Just make sure you're not pinching the wires when you put the box in. The open end is facing down to the, the bottom. See the open end. Okay. So we'll do that up. Uh, 
on each side. There's nothing really structural about this, it just really protects the, uh, the wiring and keeps it all together neat and tidy. Okay, so that's attached now. The wire exit from the uh, the mag hole is covered. And you have the wires hanging at the front. There's an excess of wires here, so you don't have to to worry. You could trim a bit off if you really want. Okay, you do your attachment to the RJ45. You then have this cover plate with the little recesses at the back. So that goes. Oops, all the way around, together like that, clips in, uh, you can do that from the, with the box disconnected as well, doesn't really matter, and just stow the wiring away, in behind here, shorter wires make it easier, but hey, longer wires give you more options, it's up to you, okay, and it goes, that way around so that the holes line up and then we've got these flanged M3 six millimeter screws just go on the outside Oops, just make sure it's lined up Mosquito off my arm. Yeah, can be a bit fiddly when it's set like this. You can turn it over on its back and make it a bit easier. But, uh, There we go. All done up. Ready to go. Okay, this is one of the last bits. Um, initially this was meant for attaching to a monitor pole via one of the, the extension uh, 27 millimeter poles with one of the, the clutch attachments. So you could still do that if you want and it just stops the thing from sliding backwards and forwards but I think that's sort of redundant now. But what this does do is provide just a little bit more stability, stiffness to the structure. So if you put that in there you'll find that there's some convenient holes with a nice cutout for these uh, 30 millimetre M4s and you can do this up from the outside quite easily. You'll see that screw disappears into that recess quite nicely. And I may well design something a little bit more a cross brace is ideal in there. Uh, a future enhancement may be to, uh, to put something a little bit more robust even than this on there. But that does do a fair bit for stiffening up the structure. Uh, there are a few extra holes here but uh, I'm not strictly necessary but uh, I think it's a good idea. Okay. That's the last bit, I think. Well, here we have the full assembly. It's pretty light. Um, sort of ready to go. But how do you attach it to the floor? Well, originally had a, an attachment for the monitor pole extension arm. But it'll work but I didn't really go on that, so I tried 
this velcro dots that's about all you need on carpet they stick really well but if you've got a smooth floor like my concrete garage floor which is a good example just put the dots down and stick it down show you how it works just line it up I've got a couple of little marks, make sure the corners push it down and it's pretty firm it won't move around so I usually uh, I recommend using socks to run these things give you a bit better feel but get the idea self centering and it's quite comfortable just to relax there don't push your feet out too hard. I'm sure there are limits to the strength of these things, but uh, you know, if you treat them with a bit of uh, care, they should do the job quite well. And it doesn't move at all. No idea. To get it up, it's pretty well locked down. They've been down there for a while, those Velcro bits. So. Try that in your house on your carpet and it does exactly the same thing. Okay, so when you go to calibrate these things, if you're interested in what range of uh, uh, signal that you get out of the, uh, the mag hall with this setup. Uh, so here we've got it in the calibrate mode. Okay, so you can see moving the pedals, that's sort of the range you get. So the full scale there is 4000, so you're getting about a 2000 calibration range, which is not too bad. Uh, you can probably see it on the screen in there. Let's see. So that's what you should expect. If you've got everything wired up right, you've got the magnet in there the correct way, and the hall sensor in there the correct way, that's roughly what you'll get. So if you accept that and finish, that's your full scale deflection. Whoops. So that's what you should expect to get. Okay. Okay, folks, that's the assembly video for this project completed. I think we all owe a huge debt of thanks to Phil Bendai for the countless hours he spent designing, developing, and testing these pedals, and probably almost as many hours making this video. If you do make the pedals, both Phil and I would love to see some photos. Remember, Phil has released this design to the community at absolutely no charge. And the reward is to see people using it and appreciating it. So, please post photos to the gallery on the same download website where you obtain these files. And also, please post to your favourite social media channels. So that's all for now. Good luck, folks, and I'll be back again very soon with more news and more Authenticate.